When I was a little boy, you know all these places now that you see big open space, forested area. We always have water and there was no flooding when we had our trees. to these areas now. I can't believe it's just open spaces. Open spaces. When you look to the right, there's an excavator. You look to the left, there's an excavator, you know, and nobody thinking about replenishing. Victorian in Trinidad and Tobago has been left unregulated for quite some time. The responsibility to rehabilitate the land was not there. And I guess that really skewed the general perception of quarrying in Trinidad. And without quarrying locally, you probably have to import that material, it'd be too costly. So I guess it is a necessary evil, right? There are concerns about how long a certain area may be viable in terms of not just winning the material, but for life thereafter. There's a certain sensitivity around the way we should mine and how we should restore things. So as we continue to mine for these aggregates, you know, we, we do something to restore the land so that it is usable for future generations. This is a real example of a corporate body taking responsibility for restoring a forest that it has destroyed inevitably. They have to provide minerals for the industry, the building, road building, construction industry, and what have you. And in order to get the minerals, they had to remove the forest. This company has taken it upon themselves to, to be as responsible as possible, to embark on a rehabilitation program. The Sanigrani Regional Corporation first got involved in this initiative with the rehabilitation of the mining and the quarrying by having a consultation session with Mr. Carlton Roberts. He is heavily involved in the forestry division. He came to council with the idea and we had a meeting. As an institution, we decided to partner and take part with this great initiative because of the benefits that it would have I Movement got involved in this project because it's really directly in line with all of our goals, really upliftment of the environment, etc. So having completed the first sort of similar project in the empowerment community called the Vets of Education Empowerment Project with the GEF Small Grants Program, National Quarries actually got wind of our project in Parman and really loved it. So that's really what led to us having a meeting with them and when we really pitched what we could bring. And that's what led into us really putting in the proposal with the GEF as well as with um, EMA, because EMA is managing the IW Eco four-year project. IW Eco stands for Integrated Water, Land and Ecosystem Management in Caribbean Small Island Developing States. There are nine countries in the IW Eco Regional Project, Trinidad being one of them. The Trinidad Project focuses on the rehabilitation of quarries in the northeast of Trinidad. So we're looking at sand and gravel quarries. Our key partner we really began working most closely with was the Trust for Sustainable Livelihoods. And with them, we partnered with the Sandy Grande Regional Corporation. And that gave us the outreach to find our participants who really turned out to be, you know, the biggest champions and partners on this project of all. The Grande Regional Corporation has played 
one of the key roles with the mobilization of the citizenry in order to be enrolled in this initiative. The Council for Sandy Grande, she had come to me personal and gave me an invitation to come to this outreach in Blake Avenue, which I did. And from there, I had came to a day of caring. And from there, I was selected to be a part of the program. I like planting, I like gardening, right? I like seeing nature. So it was like me being here was like a joy due to anything to do with soil. I just love dealing with the soil. First, I started to hear about this from my wife. She went to the meeting that they had and she come and she tell me about it. And then she got the call that they was about to kick off. And I said, well, I'll try because I always wanted to be a part of planting. To me, I feel very blessed because this take me from A to B because I have learned and I had no idea how to start planting. And I have learned quite a lot in taking care of plants. It gave me a joy because every time I come to the quarry to take care of the plant, it gave me a joy and having me now having these feelings to get to my own. We are thankful that we have been through this semester of, of quarry rehabilitation and no one the was injured. The community involvement in environmental restoration is crucial. So the idea is to have people from the community, empower them with the knowledge about ecology, the value of forests, value of trees, and give them skills and that is what this project is all about. The community people coming in, be trained and executing the action that would restore the area to some sort of ecological respectability. It was a real pleasure to see people from the community actually participate in the project. And that sense of satisfaction they had from being part of something that was good National Quarries has always taken its responsibility to rehabilitate the land very seriously. I think this partnership has really struck the sweet spot and we found a very good balance between our corporate responsibility, what is mandated by the law, and the function of NGOs and the community to actually mesh everything together. All quarries that are registered and licensed by the Ministry of Energy. We are required by law, the Energy Minerals Act and the Environmental Management Act to rehabilitate the quarry. I mean, it just makes sense. We can't just dig up it and just leave it there. It's just not sustainable. It's just not the right thing to do. Um, and there are laws in place to ensure that all quarry operators that are licensed are responsible for that. experimented with reforestation exercises but as you could have seen from our experience right now the soil is so barren that just planting trees there just simply wouldn't work. We already needed to find a way to revitalize the soil itself. We're looking at interventions such as um, the use of live check dams which would be used in um, mitigating erosion. We're looking at the use of vetiver plants, again, in terms of soil stabilization. We're looking at species enrichment because originally these degraded quarry lands were forest reserve. So once the material is exhausted and excavated, it's how do we rehabilitate or bring back to an almost natural state again, using forest species. major interventions that we're looking at is waste diversion. The two areas which I am movement specifically focused on were the introduction of vetiver grass as a bioengineering tool that could do various things as well as mulching which is the channeling of organic waste streams to the quarry.
we just recognize that there's a lot of organic mulch just generated in Trinidad and normally gets channeled to the landfills, which are already at capacity and don't really have space for more material. So we just thought, you know, if we could channel that to the quarry, degraded lands, you know, what impact could that have? And the impacts for that have just been totally incredible where within four months, you know, bare sand, which has had nothing growing for years, now has a complete thriving ecosystem where originally nothing at all was growing. And we actually have UE involved taking samples, showing that there's virtually nothing living in the soil. So now where we have thriving vegetal environments, thick topsoil, even, you know, bringing a lot of native species back of animals. It has provided us with a real insight into how we could use organic material to quickly and cheaply rehabilitate quarries in a very short period of time. It's a way of closing waste loops such that waste can really be transformed into something good. Out of all of our experiences, we think that it has the most potential to be a long-term and very successful tool in quarry rehabilitation. Once these continue growing at the rate they are, and the other species grow at the same rate that they are growing, in 10, in 5 to 10 years, we should have a forest with a closed canopy. And that's what we're looking at, where the, the, where the crowns are touching each other. And that's what you call a closed canopy forest. And that starts the ecological function um, going again, where the the leaves will drop to the ground, decompose, release the nutrients, and the plants uh, absorb the nutrients, and a full nutrient cycle will begin again once the canopy has been established. Now, the reason we did vetiver grass is vetiver is a multifaceted plant and can help tackle problems such as erosion and slope stabilization, which take place at the quarry. Vetiver grass has that unique ability to hold the soil together. So using that vetiver system can complement restoration operation. And that is what IM movement is all about. Sus trust is about planting trees. The combination of trees and grass would slow down the movement of water. So if you have the trees above and you have the grass underneath, you slow down the movement of water and give the, the, the water opportunity to percolate into the soil. So that IM movement, that vetiver system and sustrust, it, it, it works wonders. And we are seeing the fruits of that right here. I was the first recipient in Paramin with the, the UN-funded Vetive program, they got someone to come and teach the craft, and I got involved in the craft. I started making chairs and baskets, and then I was asked to do the project in Sangre Grande with the workers from the Sangre Grande Rehabilitation. So I went up there and I did the craft with the workers. It was a very good experience working with the people from Sangre Grande. I mean, they were so nice. I just showed them the basics and I said to them, you know, you all don't have to do the same thing. Everything could be different. You all can make different things. And they all came up with something different. And it was so amazing that they, they just took to it and they, they, they really amazed me. This is the vetiver root from the plant. This is the, this is the soap that is made from the vetiver root and vetiver oil. And this is a basket made from the vetiver leaves. We have chairs and there's a nice mat in the back there and a basket made from the vetiver. For me personally, Honeycraft is like after one to the next. Instead of like getting rid of the, the leaves from trimming it, you can use it for making money as well, right? You can make chairs, you can use the roots to do wood bundling, right? Soap, right? Baskets, and you save money and you can make money.
having something so simple like grass, I never thought it could be so beneficial to me. You can make money from selling the roots. You can make money from selling the leaves. You can also sell plants because people buy plants to plant on their land that is slipping and where they have an erosion. So you can make a living out of the vetiver plant. We should always respect the, the local knowledge that people have. People have come to the table with some knowledge. Some with agricultural knowledge, some with just a love for the environment, and some want to do something for humanity. And we have seen that whole range of personalities coming together. Do not discard somebody because they can read and write. We have people who they were branded as illiterate and they have responded very well to the, to the classroom setting and they respond even better on the, on, on the field because they have some innate practical knowledge of, of planting and, and, and being in the field. Another lesson I learned is not to disregard somebody based on age. When the applications came in, people were 50 years and 51 years, and those senior people have been the leaders. Another important lesson is don't disregard the value of females in a venture like this. It was not a pressure for me being out there in the field. I was accustomed being like that. Whenever I come to do a task, I just make up my mind, go and do my task, rain thunder, light, and just do my task and get over with. It was never difficult for me. My experience working with Iron Movement, it was not a pressure of seeing that, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that, so they come down to me. It was all about a learning experience and you know, you make a mistake, it's like, you never make a mistake, it's get up and go again and try harder. Because we have a whole crew amongst us and we enjoy being together because we always have a laugh, a smile, you know. We always have up together, look out for each other. It's been amazing seeing the growth of the rehabilitation champions. And as I said, I really have big hopes for them. I hope that it can really grow into something more nationwide and outside of just National Quarries and Turi inside them. I think it's a great symbol of the possibilities for people in the quarry industry around what they could do about environmental rehabilitation. Very simple, very easy, and, you know, doable. The hope that I have towards this project is that I can reach out to more people and can take this project even further. My dream is to hope for the project is to see more warriors getting involved into the project. Right down National Quarry for this initiative. I hope that this is just the model that the country as a whole can follow. And I really hope that this is really the start of something much bigger. We did not inherit the forest from our ancestors, but we borrowed it from our grandchildren.